everybody. Happy Valentine's Day to uh, the folks that are watching today and later. Happy Valentine's Day late. Uh, happy Valentine's Day evening. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the New Bedford Symphony Orchestra's next concert. This uh, coming Saturday. Yeah, Saturday at 7.30, Roses and Thorns. Um, talk about the lineup, what people can expect on Saturday. Well, um, on this concert we are having two uh, wonderful, beautiful, uh, well-known pieces, uh, plus a wonderful and beautiful, not so well-known piece because it's a new piece. So I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that nobody uh, that is going to come to the concert has uh, heard it before and um, it's a really wonderful piece of music. So the first piece of music that we're going to open the concert with is uh, the suite from the opera Rosen Cavalier by Richard Strauss, which is just uh, stunning music, really. Um, he was a, a composer that um, I think, judging just from, from the music that he wrote, wanted to show off, show off his skills as a composer and show off the orchestra and what the orchestra can do. And um, uh, he wrote just uh, incredible music. Uh, and on the second half of the concert, we're going to play Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, uh, also a very, very beloved and uh, often performed piece that I think people never get tired of listening to it. So it would be great to listen to it again. Or if you never heard it for the first time, also great. So I'm talking to you before, you like contrast, you like the you know, the sweet with the bitter, and you know, Roses and Thorns really lends itself to that. I'm assuming the Roses are Strauss, you know, famous for the waltzes, um, you know, and I think it's, the, I read on the, uh, on the on the orchestra's website, kind of the Night of the Rose is the translation for the opera. Right. Is this that kind of uh, piece that's going to be, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, want to put your dancing shoes on and uh, go for a spin on the floor? Yeah, the, there's uh, uh, definitely a famous some famous waltzes there. Uh, by the way, we're talking about Richard Strauss, not uh, Johann Strauss, ah. that is famous for his waltzes, and there's no, no relation. No there. relation, okay. No family relation. But uh, Richard Strauss, in his opera, Rosen Cavalier, wrote some beautiful uh, waltzes. One of them is this that you are going to hear. Tchaikovsky, a Russian composer, but no matter what he wrote, whether it was a symphony of, uh, or, or a concerto or a solo uh, instrument, instrumental music, he really wrote ballet music in everything that he wrote, you know? So even in, in his symphonies, you know, that uh, uh, is, a, is a piece for an orchestra, you can find ballet music, you can f find a lot of waltzes there. For example, in the first movement of the symphony, the second theme, we have a waltz. It goes like this. I was interested in reading the, the symphony orchestra kind of description of the concert, and uh, it references the Fifth Symphony and kind of his um, self-doubt around that period. And also, it cites an American critic saying that uh, in spite of the prevailing wild savagery of his music, 
which is just fascinating to, to kind of, uh, you know, we look back on it now, obviously kind of a classic that, that, that uh, is esteemed and beloved, but in its time may have been, uh, you know, judged more harshly or uh, picked apart a little bit. So It's interesting, right, to, to think about these great composers that we love so much and, uh, and read and hear about the, the, everything that they, they tortured themselves with, all the, the self-doubt and uh, insecurities. And I think it's human, you know, it's something that everybody has. And they didn't even have Facebook comments or Twitter uh, comments that I have to worry about. So. <laughs> um, and then in the middle, you have a, you're continuing your theme with, with women composers this year. Talk about the, uh, the piece in the middle. Yeah, so in the, in the, in the middle, between the, the two pieces, we are going to perform a cello concerto by a, a Swedish composer, uh, Andrea Tarodi. And um, this is, you know, uh, when I, I did my, my research to, to, in order to program the music by women composers for this season, I, I listened to a lot of, a lot of different pieces. Um, and this piece really grabbed me from the beginning. It has the best, uh, one of the best openings that, that I've heard recently. It's just gorgeous. Um, it, it's based, it's, it's inspired from the Scottish Highlands, which is a geographic, geographical area in, in Scotland um, with a lot of wild nature, you know, and um, uh, s starts kind of with the long uh, notes played by the orchestra, which many composers actually use sometimes uh, uh, to describe uh, um, nature and, and uh, wide landscapes. You know? So they write long notes. What can be a better way to do it? And then uh, it, it's uh, quite beautiful. And then out of this, the cello, the solo cello emerges. Uh, it's, really, uh, it's really an incredible moment uh, in the concerto when that, when that happens. Um, it's, it's a one movement concerto, but actually has small, uh, six small movements inside of it that I, are played one after the other without, without a break. And each movement is, is inspired by something else. There's one movement that is inspired, it's called uh, Bird Cathedral. And um, the cello, the solo cello, is uh, playing these effects, special effects on the cello that sound uh, sound like uh, seagulls, uh, sounds of seagulls, and soon enough the, the whole cello section in the orchestra uh, answers like a whole flock of seagulls, you know? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a really beautiful piece and I'm sure our, our audience will enjoy it. Yeah. It's kind of exciting to kind of introduce that to people who probably haven't heard it before because that sounds very inventive and uh, kind of, uh, you know, something different from the classics. Right, and it's always fun to um, combine between the two. And your guest uh, soloist? Wonderful cellist, uh, Christine Lee, with whom I performed in the past. Uh, we performed together with the Houston Symphony uh, uh, two or three years ago. She played the, the Schumann Cello Concerto, uh, which is a very well-known uh, piece that is played pretty, pretty often. And, um, a uh, wonderful musician, beautiful uh, player, beautiful sound she makes out of the cello. And I remembered her Good. from back then. She impressed me so much and I'm so happy that I had the chance to, to um, make it happen, that we work together again. Was this a piece you were excited about for that kind of, you know, it's interesting because that seems like a kind of a skill that you're not really practicing every day, is right. like a seagull sound with a cello. You'd, um, you'd have to ask her. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 of course it was a new piece for her. She had to, to learn it, especially for this performance. She, uh, actually, we talked about it uh, this morning. She, she told me that she had never seen anything like that before, this kind of effect. And she actually contacted the, the, the composer and asked her about specific, about some techniques, yeah. that she, special techniques that she uses for this piece and what exactly she, she meant and what exactly she wanted. So I think it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, that's an exciting addition. That's, uh, yeah. that's excellent. And then a new, another new addition I'm interested in, um, the press, the, the uh, your website says, is you're going to be 
extending the stage a little bit out into the uh, into the Z and taking up some of the uh, some of the seating space That's right. to uh, work on the acoustics. That's right. So this is something that we've been working on uh, for quite some time about how to improve uh, the acoustics and, and the whole uh, listening experience of the audience. And uh, one of the things that we were recommended uh, was to extend the stage and have the orchestra actually come closer to the audience. Uh, so we are going to do that um, for the first time this weekend and um, see how it goes. We want to hear also from our audience what they thought about it. It'll be fun. It's, it's going to be a, a nice night of uh, some, some new music and some familiar music and some new... Uh, it's going to look different on the stage. So it'll, right. be a, it'll be a great night. So. Right. Saturday, 7.30, here at the Zaterian. Um, tickets at the box office and, on, uh, and online. So uh, thank you again for, uh, for uh, joining us. Thank you. See you at the concert.